The next question uh, is, uh, is an important one, I think, to the community, and that is first, oh, how, uh, how big a problem is crime for Aniston, and what is your plan to diminish the crime rate uh, in the city? And we'll begin with Mr. Lockham. You didn't go? No, wait, yeah. no, no, we're right. Crime in Aniston. What I propose to do is, is the following. We have to first help our policemen, or our safety officials, we have to make sure they have the, the best facilities, they have the best equipment, they have the best training, you know, whatever they need, we need to put a plan together and put that on paper and evaluate what we've got. Then I want to, as mayor, I want to get people to help keep up with the city. I'm going to call them block mayors. I want these people to be consist of volunteers in different areas of town that can help me keep up with what's, or help, not me keep up with, but help the city keep up with what's going on in their areas as far as trying to prevent crime before it happens. You know, we've got a lot of houses and stuff that, that need to be torn down and, and fixed, and we just need to get a list of all those potential areas, and these block mayors can help us maybe get ahead of, ahead of crime. We need to, of course, get the city going economically so that people aren't living the crime quite as much. We need to focus on, on youth programs. If the youth have something to do, they're going to stay out of trouble. And I really have talked to a lot of youth leaders, and, and they're short of funds. They need, they need help. They need our support. And as a city, you know, if we can buy them a basketball jersey to, to play on a little local church league or something to keep them out, out of the streets, that's going to help us all as a city. And then you talk about that five or ten minutes you get them when they're not on the basketball court. You can teach them things about life that's going to help them see a different different way of looking at things. It's going to help them be a more productive person. We need to focus on also the adult training. You know, we need to educate our kids. We also need to educate our adults. If we can get our adults more educated through GED or vocational programs by taking to those areas, then they're going to have income. They're going to be less likely to be involved in crime. My wife has taught GED in the past, and you know, a lot of teachers we have can volunteer to go help GED classes in some of these businesses in town and be close to people so they can have access to those resources. And uh, you know, public safety starts with us, I think. It starts with me and it starts with each one of us. We just all gotta get out there and do our job. Mr. James, I promise. First responsibility of the federal government is to protect the shoreline and the citizens therein. The first responsibility of city government should be to protect its citizens. How can we recruit jobs when you see on the internet with electronic media today scattered throughout the United States the fact that there's only three cities in America more dangerous to live in than Addison, Alabama per capita of over 20,000? That's a sad commentary. The number one question I'm asked when I go that way is what are you going to do about the crime if you're mayor? Well, the police department's hands are tied to a certain degree. First of all, there's a perception that that way cannot trust the police department. Whether it's true or not, I have no way of knowing. But the perception is there. So as a the mayor, that issue has got to be addressed and be addressed strongly. Also, another thing the city can do to help prevent it Crime is a cultural thing. It's brought about by lack of economics. Why don't they have crime of this nature in Hoover, Mount Brook, Best David? Because they don't have the abstract poverty in those cities that we have that way. We have got to change our model in the way we provide shelter for the poor in our community. We're still doing it the same way we did in 1930, 1940, 1950. The projects are little more than economic prisons for our citizens. And we've got to change that. I'm not saying that Aniston needs to get out of the housing business. I'm not saying that Aniston does not need to subsidize those who need to subsidize it. But we do not need to be fostering that kind of uh, environment. We're all products of our environment. That affects our school. That affects the way we live. It affects our crime rate. And as, a, and as an administration, we have a, a, a duty to, to to correct that problem. And as your mayor, I will work diligently to do so. Thank you. I agree with Mike. I think the most important job of the city is to protect its citizens. 
I think we have to attack crime in a smart way, basically attacking the causes of crime. And the causes of crime go back to schools, jobs, and lack thereof as far as keeping kids in schools. I had a front row seat for 15 years as municipal judge, and I'm here to tell you we don't have a monopoly of bad kids in Aniston. We've just got kids that go bad because of lack of opportunities. We need to find a way to keep our kids in school. A high dropout rate, a 42% parallel high, high crime rate. And we've got to work on elementary education, make school exciting, keep them in school. So when it comes to the pivotal year of age 16, they stay in school, vocational education is important. The police department, their new strategic plan includes community policing. I have spoken with both police officers and fire officers about volunteering with PARD as coaches in the uh, Little League, uh, football, soccer, uh, et cetera, the different sports leagues. Very important because we want our young people to see an officer in a mentoring role, not just putting cuffs on somebody up the street. I want to work with the officers. I'm all for more boots on the ground. That deters crime. We must have neighborhood policing. We must take officers off Quintard and into the neighborhoods, walking and interacting with the neighbors. We need neighborhood associations. Every community center needs to have a neighborhood association. We've got to take our neighborhoods back. But work with us on this. Back to schools, back to jobs. We can, we can take care of this crime issue. Thank you.
first crime watch organizational session that to my knowledge has occurred in the city in the last several years. Uh, and candidly, uh, Councilman Jay Jenkins uh, was also at that meeting and we're going to have another one. And that is going to be an established group prior to the election. We're going, and that's in Bellum Heights. That's not in the community center. There are parts of Bellum Heights and Lock that the city staff doesn't even understand is within the city limits. They're not even on the city maps. And we, and I agree, we need to get out to uh, Lindlock and Golden Springs and all over, north, south, east, and west. Uh, but this is not something that I'm talking about. This is something we're doing. And the information you receive is incredible. I had a black lady that told me, John, go to Birmingham. Talk to them. They got an ordinance that if you're in school, and it's during the school year and you're not home at 11 o'clock, they can bring your mama and your daddy in, or your grandmama and your granddaddy. <laughs> and I said, are you serious? And I'm going to Birmingham, folks. <laughs> and we are developing a pass out that is good things to do, bad things to do. Input from the police officers, input from the residents. And I want, if we can get the people to understand their neighborhood is at stake, and it can be better than, and if treated with respect from Lawrenceville, the two will work together and we can shove crime somewhere else. Thank you. Goodman on crime. I think in order to get rid of some of the crime is to build a relationship with the police officers to communicate. And one thing that I really um, disappointed in that there was a time in attending city council meeting for the last seven years, there was a time where you have public comment and the public could come in and voice concerns. But they could, and they could get a response. But now, when they come in and voice concerns, there's no response. So there's communication breakdown. Right you listen to one side, but you're not hearing what the other side is saying. So I believe we will strengthen the relationship between the community and the uh, police force, and begin to communicate more. It will make a big difference in this community. Mr. Salmon, how big a problem is crime, and what would you? to diminish the crime rate? Well, if you, if my wife has handed you one of my pamphlets, you'll see on there that my top priority is public safety. That's the reason cities historically were organized in the first place, is so that people could be safe. And to that end, I pledge to work diligently for a fully funded, fully trained, fully staffed police, fire, and emergency medical staff. I think that's absolutely essential. If nothing else gets done, if the bottom falls out of the economy, we still have to do that because we have to feel safe in our homes, our neighborhoods, our schools, and our businesses. Now, I haven't heard anyone say anything yet about really what the root cause of most of the crime in Addison is, and that's drugs. You ask the police chief, he'll tell you 80% or better of arrests in this town are due to drugs. So to that end, I would ask the council's support in conjunction with the, the police department for an all-out push to hopefully over a reasonable period of time run the drug dealers out of town. I think that's what, that'll, that'll take care of most of the crime problem in Addison. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? You hit Crystal Map one time, you're addicted. You're searching for it the rest of your life. There's no rehabilitation for Crystal Map. Oh, there, there's supposed to be programs, but it doesn't work. You hit Crystal Map, 
you are looking to buy it the rest of your life and you'll do anything for it. Crystal meth's the big drug in Amsterdam, as it is nationally. We've got a crime problem, we've got a drug problem, we've got a violence problem in this town because of drugs. Now this is what I've done personally. I've attended most Stop the Violence meetings for the last six years and been involved with citizens and the police department. The Stop the Violence bumper stickers you see all over town, I've bought them twice. This is my second generation of them. I also have yard signs out that haven't been put out yet because there's so many political signs. Once this is over, you'll see the Stop the Violence yard signs everywhere. Uh, we're building the new Justice Soul Hub Justice Center, very human. And the jail is in the conditions to where we wouldn't even put Iranians in that jail. So it had to be built. Uh, it just simply had to from a human aspect. I turn in all incoming drug calls. Chris, my contact, knows me. He tell me by voice instantly. I'm surprised he's not tired of me calling. I cut, turn in every one of them and I get a lot of them. I don't macromanage the police department. I'm not going to break the Council Manager Act. I support them. They're the experts. I'm not. Uh, real important is to build an industrial base in Anniston and McClellan to, to put people back to work so they don't have time for drugs, violence, and crime. Thank you. Obviously, we all know crime is too high in Anniston, and, and we all know that a great deal of it's related to drugs. Uh, there's not a simple solution. It comes from different areas. Uh, first, you know, education is, in, it, is important, and it, we, we all know we need to improve our, um, uh, our uh, or reduce our dropout rate. And that is that is happening now. With our graduation, our graduation rate is going up slightly, but we have a long way to go. But it's got to begin in the schools. Uh, also, we have to deal with our economy. We have to have opportunities for these young people. Uh, it's it's hard to uh, not have opportunity. Uh, then you have free time, and you resort to the things that, that get you in trouble. Uh, we had we. Uh, uh, as uh, Mike has said, we, where is, uh, where do all does the money and the resources come from? One way I believe we can uh, divert resources to the community policing uh, effort. Uh, it's been very successful in High Point, North Carolina. Is our huge turnover rate at the Aniston Police Department? That's very costly and it's non-productive. And I think we need to uh, talk and communicate with our police chief and and find out how we can help. What can be done to um, to slow this turnover rate? Because I think we're training police officers for the rest of the country all the time, and um, I think. That way, free resources that we can put in other areas. And uh, also, we're going to have to uh, look at innovative ways to address our drug problems. Um, our crime situation can be um, improved, and I believe we have a good police department that's willing to work with us to do that. Thank you. Mr. Bradford, I think you get the last word on crime. Thank you. I, uh, in my neighborhood, what creates crime is poverty. Small word, three syllables. I just talked to some young guys coming up here, just got out of jail. Some just got out of prison. They are lacking opportunities and skills. That's why it was from them that I got the idea of skills. If you look, most young men who are incarcerated are going to be incarcerated. A lot of them are lacking skills. And if you lack skills and you're put out of school for chewing gum, wearing glasses, or even slacking your pants, and you stand out there and the politicians 
says nothing about what your problem is. Poverty breeds criminals. Because these young guys want to get what they need one way or the other. Your house, my house. My head, your head. Because they want things. They was cheated in school the way they feel about it. And a lot of them say even after they go to school, they really didn't learn a damn thing. And they said it just like that. Just like that. My answer to it, deal with these young people and give them a skill to be able to earn themselves a living. That's what they want. A lot of them has gone to jail and they found their way 